Hello and welcome back to She Walks She Paints. Thank you for joining me again and thank you for all your lovely support and comments over the last few videos, especially when we were in Sky. It was an amazing trip and we did so much walking, so it's nice to be quite local again. We've come to the Falkland Estate, which is where we went in episode two, I think it was, but we're doing a different walk, which is East Lomond Hill. Now it's looking a little bit atmospheric today. There's a little bit of cloud up at the top, but I'm sure it'll clear and we'll get some nice views, but we'll have a lovely walk, whatever happens. So let's head out, see what we can find. Uh, midway through these steps you can see the rest of them there just to take a layer off because it's so warm now that we've started climbing this is probably the closest hill to where we live and I've done this route so many times and I always forget how steep it is it is very steep coming up those steps and it's only about to get steeper <laughs> as we go up the hill it's a good workout for the legs but it does make you very warm very quickly so just stop for a little breather and take a layer off and enjoy the bird song for a little bit Pups. We like it here, don't we? We like going up East Lomond. Come on, let's go. Lomond, also known as Falkland Hill, is the remnant of an extinct volcano that formed around 4 million years ago and was the location of a Pictish hill fort.
that's where we're going. Looks quite ominous in the mist. I love these weird little buds. I've never seen them before. I'll have to find out what they are. On a pine or a spruce tree, maybe? Have a look into it. Like little raspberries. <laughs> It was so eerie standing at the top, with the bone-chilling clouds sweeping past and glimpses of the surrounding land coming and going. It felt like I was isolated from the world. made it to the top. You can just see the trick point up at the top there. It's typical isn't it? The sky was so beautiful in spring like and now we're back home and I'm back in my thick fleece and my woolly hat. So hopefully spring will happen properly soon but this is Scotland so you prepare for anything. <laughs> The 
This was the site of an Iron Age hill fort, built somewhere between 700 BC and 500 AD. It was probably the chief fortress of a Celtic tribe called the Venicones. What is now a quiet and peaceful place was once a hive of activity. This fort would have been a Pictish seat of power and a refuge in times of war for almost a thousand years. As well as a small enclosure on the summit, there were ramparts and terraces on the slopes of the hill. I am on the remains of these structures today, literally walking in the footsteps of ancient history. pretty chilly up at the top here because we're up in the clouds and um, we're gonna head back into Falkland village and I know last time I had a video here people were really interested in the village so I'm gonna take you down there and do a little walking tour of that so I can show you the historic buildings there so we'll head back down the hill and I will see you at the bottom This plaque commemorates the unlikely link between the village of Falkland and Johnny Cash. The American singer was a regular visitor to Falkland due to a chance discovery that his family was connected to the area. It turned out Cash was of Scottish descent and his family had come from this area before emigrating to America. The singer was fascinated by the land of his ancestors and he visited many times, even performing a special concert at the palace in 1981. The blackbirds. I'm getting some worms. No.
village of Falkland stood in for 1940s Inverness in the first series of Outlander, with the characters Claire and Frank staying in this building, and a ghostly glimpse of Jamie Fraser appearing next to this fountain. Today it is a popular destination for fans of the show. Falkland Palace sits right in the centre of the village, a Renaissance palace that was used by the Scottish kings and queens of the 15th and 16th centuries as a retreat and hunting lodge. The gardens contain the oldest tennis court still in use, built in 1541 for James V. Mary, Queen of Scots, favoured this residence and often came here to stay during her turbulent reign. It is strange to think that such an iconic person in Scottish history may have walked the same streets that we do today. I love hearing the blackbird song. It's so distinctive and uplifting. They mainly sing during the spring months when the birds are building nests and preparing to mate. So we're all done now, gonna head home. It was a really nice little end to that, just to have a cup of coffee, surrounded by all this bird song. It's so beautiful. I feel like Snow White or something. I'm gonna take a look at my photographs when I get home and I'll see what I take to the studio. So I'll see you there.
actually have two so-called black watercolour pens, although they are both made of different tones. One is very cool and the other is warm. I have chosen the warm one, but I will add in cool tones to the feathers where the light hits them using blue. I'm also using brown here to add depth and roundness to the black feathers. The darkness of the blackbird's feathers has led them to be seen as bad omens or linked to death in some cultures, similar to ravens and crows. In Celtic mythology, the blackbird's song was supposed to be so beautiful it could bring the dead back to life. To me, blackbirds are a wonderful sight. They always look so bright and quizzical, with their yellow ringed eyes, standing out especially against the male's black feathers. I love the challenge of creating texture with a beard that is all one dark colour. It's one of those times when you have to look closer to discover all the different tones and shades at play.
I decided against a background for this painting. The figure of the bird stands out so starkly on the white paper that I didn't want to detract from it by adding in anything else. All my paintings are available as prints on Etsy, so please do check out my store. The link is in the video description below, as well as my Instagram and Ko-fi pages. Spaniels and photography don't mix.